Hi, in this video I will talk about the matrix product, which is one of the most important operations in linear algebra, especially concerning machine learning. So product in general is what we call the result of multiplying two elements together, in this case two matrices. But unlike numbers, where you can multiply any two of them together, matrices you have to be a bit careful. The matrix product A times B is only defined, so you are only allowed to do that if A has the same number of columns as B has rows. In this diagram, I've marked those two dimensions with blue. If that is the case, then the matrix product is defined and the result, uh, in this case I called it C, has the same number as rows as A and the same number of columns as B. In this diagram, these are the green and pink dimensions. All right, now let's look at how we can calculate the product. First, let's look at the formal definition. We define the result of the product C entry-wise. So Cij, so the ith row and the jth column, the entry at that point in C, is defined as the sum over all the entries in the ith row of A and the jth column in B. So you see in the formula, you have this running index K, which means we progress through the row of A and through the column of B at the same time. Here you can see a rough example first of what I mean. I divided A into rows and the second matrix B into columns because these are the important dimensions for the product. And then if we look at the entry that is marked in pink in the matrix C, so that's the first row, second entry, then the important parts of A and B are the first row of A because we're in the first row of the result, so that matches. And in the result, we're concerned right now with the second column, that's the pink circle. So we take the second column of B as well. Okay, now that we've identified the correct rows and columns, let's look at some numbers. So I have again marked the first row and the second column in those example matrices. And the resulting entry in the first row and second column of the result is then two by two, which are the first entries, plus zero times one, which are the second entries of each of those, and then plus one times zero, which are the last entries of the row or column respectively. And the result of that is simply four. And for the complete result matrix, you would simply do this calculation for every entry and the respective rows and columns that you have to choose from the origin matrices. If this is completely new to you, I encourage you to take a few matrices, just think of some numbers and just practice this until it gets like sort of second nature and you know, okay, I have to take this row and this column and like combine them. And then you can check your result with some online calculator that does matrix multiplication. Okay, let's move on to something that is very similar and that's matrix vector multiplication. Basically, you can take everything that you've just learned from matrix matrix multiplication and apply it. And we just pretend like the vector is just a matrix with one column. First, here's the schema where you can see that you always take the vector, but for each resulting entry in the result vector, which I've marked with these colorful circles, you select the appropriate row from the matrix A that is in front. So for the first entry in the result vector, you take the first row and multiply it with your desired vector. And for the second entry, you take the second row and so on. An example with numbers looks as follows. So for the first entry in pink, you take the first row of the matrix and then you multiply two by one, plus the second entries are zero and then four in the vector, plus one times zero again from the vector, is in total two. And then for the second entry in blue, you do the same with the second row from the matrix. And again, multiply each entry with the respective entry from the vector. Let's also quickly look at some properties. So what are you allowed to do with a matrix product in a formula, for example, that you need to change for some specific purpose? All of these properties can of course be proven mathematically to show that these are indeed true for every matrix. And if you're interested to see that, leave a comment down below and I can make a separate video about these proofs. But for applications, it's mostly important that you know what you're allowed to do and what not, and not necessarily the details of why. So first, uh, matrix multiplication is distributive. That means that you can switch up A 
times B plus C to be two separate products. So A times B plus A times C. And that's the same as if you would take real numbers. You are also allowed to do that with numbers. Then the next thing is that it's associative. So that means if you have a product chain of A times B and then times C, it's the same if you first multiply A and B and then multiply C with the result of that, or if you first multiply B and C together and then multiply A with the result of that. Now, of course, all of that only works if the products are defined. So the matrices have to have matching dimensions as I showed you on the first slide of this video. But something that is extremely important to know and sort of unusual because this is allowed with numbers, but not with the matrix product. And that is that their matrix product is not commutative. So in general, with two matrices that you know nothing about, you are not allowed to switch the order a times B is in general not the same as B times A. Of course, there are exceptions to this. For example, if A and B are the same matrix, it doesn't matter if you multiply A with B or B with A because they're the same anyways. But if you know nothing about the matrices, for example, in a formula that you're using or an algorithm, you can switch the order around. In general, the result will be different. And that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.